When you type in vegan diet, the amount of articles online stating that a diet devoid of animal products is deficient in many nutrients is overwhelming. Now, whilst it's true that a poorly planned whole food plant-based diet can lead to deficiencies in certain nutrients, many animal-based diets face similar deficiencies. For example, did you know that many US citizens, vegan or not, are deficient in vitamin D and vitamin B6? Some health educators have said that as many as 70% of people may be deficient in magnesium due to the depletion in our soils. Scientific data has this number between 30 to 50%. The Institute of Medicine recommends that every person over the age of 50 should be supplementing with vitamin B12. Now, I really appreciate Dr. Furman's work when it comes to helping people maintain a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet and preventing people from running into serious problems on this diet. So according to his work with vegan patients, what are the two most important nutrients he has found to be missing in vegans? I think zinc and DHA are the most important nutrients missing in vegans for long-term health because obviously my goal here is not to beat the American lifespan of 7085, which most vegans would get, just a little bit of benefit. We're going for such a degree of nutritional excellence and want people to live to be 95 or 105. In that case, then we're seeing both brain health and immune system resistance to infection makes zinc and DHA such an important nutrient for the ultra longevity and keeping the brain and the immune system intact as we get that old. Just because the studies show that there's benefits from zinc and prostate cancer does not mean it's any less beneficial for women. Don't forget, years ago, the risk of death was still infection and pneumonias were still most of the bigger cause of death and cancer, and zinc has been shown to reduce risk of pneumonia and support immune function in later life in both men and women. But zinc certainly is difficult to measure because zinc in the blood is not accurate for zinc stores. There's a few acceptable types of zinc that people can take, and that, like zinc picolinate, but there's, other, there's a few other types that are acceptable as well. And I think that we should achieve approximately the RDI through supplemental forms. In other words, we don't need to take 25 to 50 milligrams of zinc a day. Certainly taking 5 to 10, let's say 10 milligrams or 8 milligrams, something like that. So we can have an excellent zinc level. We don't have to, uh, we don't have to hyperdose it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.